The following is a presentation of Two Sports, the leader in local sports coverage. tonight for Colony League basketball as the Banger Slaters take on the Spartans from Southern Lehigh. Hi and welcome everyone. Al DeCar alongside Jim Wills. Glad you could join us on this Thursday night edition of High School Hoops and we expect to have a good one between these two teams and Jim as we look at the matchup Banger has won six out of seven on the other side Southern Lehigh has won four out of five. We should expect a doozy tonight. Oh it should be a great game here tonight Al. Both teams playing really really well at this time of the season. Some great shooting some great defense and a little bit of a surprise Banger having that bad start but really coming back really with a vengeance lately. Well, we talk about the Banger Slayers. Bron Holland in his second season as the head coach has done a great job with this team coming off a win against Saucon Valley. And one reason has been to play our Aaron Popovich. Aaron Popovich has done a great job. He's averaging 11 points a game, and he's doing a great job with the three ball out. 27 threes on the season. When he gets hot, it's going to be a real show out there from the three-point line. On the other side, and you look at Bob Schaefer's team, they've been doing a great job, and they beat Notre Dame on Tuesday night. And one reason for their success has been Corey Schmidt. Dynamic, 37 points in a win. Tremendous. And again, five threes the other night against Notre Dame. But he is tremendous. Averaging 22 points a game. He just is a pure shooter. When he gets hot, he gets hot. The other night he was in his zone, and you saw what happens. Be interesting tonight again. Southern Lehigh in first place in their division. Banger right now in third place with Notre Dame and Wilson in front of them. Big game tonight, Thursday night. Your edition coming up next, live on Two Sports. Put some color in your world with a new floor from Mohawk Color Center. We've earned our name by bringing style and beauty to some of the finest homes in the world. Something Mohawk has been doing for over a century. For the greatest selection of carpet, hardwood, laminate, and even ceramic tile. From a name you can trust, Mohawk Color Center. Flooring made simple. Visit r &J Carpet Connection, 922 North 3rd Street in Whitehall. These days I leave my car at home. I ride the bus. It's a smart choice. Lanta Metro is the comfortable, fast, clean, and low-cost way to make your way around the valley. Lanta Metro, the smart choice. These days I leave my car at home. I ride the bus. It's a smart choice. Lanta Metro is the comfortable, fast, clean, and low-cost way to make your way around the valley. Lanta Metro, the smart choice. Hey, basketball fans, if you love dealing with a winning team, head to the leader, Collectors in Whitehall and Amaz for the fabulous GE tip-off sale. Browse our huge selection of GE ranges, GE refrigerators, GE dishwashers, GE washers, and GE dryers. Now at Collectors, get great savings plus free delivery, free haul away of old, a full parts department, and their own factory train techs. Stop in today. See why Collectors has been serving the Lehigh Valley since 1945. Two locations, Collectors, 2177 MacArthur Road in Whitehall and 575 Chestnut Street, Amaz. We welcome you back to Southern Lehigh High School, 10 and 4, 9 and 4, but league a little bit different. 6 and 4 for the Slaters, 7 and 3, first in the south for the Southern Lehigh Spartans. Ron Holland to your right, We're talking to Bob Schaefer and Kurt Zellner from the Southern Lehigh Spartans. And boy, little, you know, a little, little size differential. Not as bad. The other night we saw Bob Frankenfield standing next to Ron Holland, and it was probably maybe, I don't know, 28 inches in difference. But <laughs> we expect a good matchup between these two teams. I tell you what. Uh, Brian Holland has done, Jim, a tremendous, tremendous job with this program. He's brought a lot of respect and winning back to the Bangor program. You know, very successful under the days of Bill Pencil, and now they come back. And he gives you that Bill Pencil look and that Bill Pencil desire and everything that Pencil brought with him. And, you know, he played for Bill Pencil, so it's a, you know, it's a disciple, and he's done a great job. Happy to be home. Said he's really excited. He teaches five minutes from, from his house, so everything's a good thing for Brian Holland right now. 
you look at you know when you look at some of their players we talked about the Povis and what he's capable of doing but Brian Smith has really been a difference maker for this squad. Oh, he's done a great job averaging 13 points a game you know and he's given that toughness you know we talked about the football carryover he's another one played football did a great job for coach Gagliotti comes to the basketball court and does the same thing for Coach Holland. If you're wondering why the late start tonight usually they tip off around 730 is the JV game. Uh, was won by Banger 58 to 57 did not go to overtime but they went down to the wire you know there for a while Bob Schaefer now in his 21st season as the head coach 323 wins 222 losses on the season their team coming off a win against Notre Dame 80 to 61 they've won four or five as we mentioned in the open and they beat Saucon Valley 73 uh, to 60 that was their only loss in that stretch by losing and that, you know on the other side for you know the Banger Slayers and Bron Holland his team the other night beat Saucon Valley 67 51 20 to nothing was the score in that contest before it was 36 10 at the end of the first half Jim. Oh this game should be very very good Al. You take a look at both teams coming in on a hot streak as you said coach Schaefer's team doing a very good job the other night against Notre Dame and you know bouncing back Banger did against that Saucon Valley team and what you know a tremendous scoring opportunity for them 36 to 10 at the half so you know you should have a great great game here this evening. Four and one at home are the Banger Slaters on the road two and three on neutral site they are three and oh well, you look at what they're capable of doing they scored 43 points a low and that was the first game of the season against East Stroudsburg not, uh, North and as a high, how about they've scored in the 70s four times this year, including 76 uh, two times. Uh, you know, great offensive opportunities. You know, they got the shooters that can do that kind of damage to you. Well, they bring in and introduce the lineups. Take a look at Aaron Popovis, and we'll take a look at our starting five for each side. For the Bengals, Slater's Matt Carey, a five foot nine sophomore guard. Aaron Popovis. A 5'9 senior guard, Dylan Gothard, a 6'2 senior forward, Brian Smith, a 6'1 senior forward, and Devic Ott comes in at 6'5, the senior forward for the Southern United Spartan. Jimmy Gruel has been doing a great job, especially from the outside. A 6'0 senior guard, Corey Soroka, a 5'11 junior. The point guard, Corey Smith, a 6'1 senior guard. Eric Boyer, a 6'1 senior forward. And Larry Reppert at 6'7, the senior center. You're starting five for both teams. And another good look at Ron Holland, an 88 grad of Banger High School in his second season. Overall record of 17 and 20. What? Before we get this tip off, and you know, it's interesting because there's a lot of games. This is a, a tough week in the Colonial League. It's supposed to schedule to play three, but some of these teams are playing four games because of the makeup, because of the weather, and what has happened, you know, over the last couple of weeks. So you're playing three, four games in a week, and we said maybe by Monday or Tuesday of next week, we'll have a better understanding of what's going to happen in the standings. Right now, we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. like about a 755 tip again carry Popovis Gothard Smith and Ott Gruel Soroka Schmidt Boyer and Rappert your officials take a look at Steve Sorrentis along with his counterpart in Mark Horn 
Well, suddenly I can extend their lead in the south over Salisbury and Saucon Valley where a banger right now no room for error they you know, you know you look at right now everyone's talking about the wild card's going to come in come out of the uh, east with Wilson and Notre Dame at nine and one and eight and two but really for them they need to control what they can do and then see if one of those two other teams you know stumble of course Notre Dame uh, lost to Southern Lehigh so that helped bangers cause the other night. Now the thing is they can't afford to stumble at all. You're right out. You know, it's just a, they're, they're picking a litter. They're in the toughest division, and that's just the, the way it is. And you, as you said, at 8-2 and two and 9-1, and one, Wilson and Notre Dame sitting up there very strong right now. So they got some. They got a break the other night with Notre Dame losing, but see, they got to keep on track themselves. Schmidt coming off a 37-point performance. Banger coming off a victory as Southern Lehigh is as well. Eric Boyer grabs the tip. We are underway, and the quick pass down. And here's Soroka. Soroka goes inside. That one gets stripped away by Brian Smith. Now Soroka tries to get that one. And a loose ball. And we get a violation. And I'll give the ball back to Southern Lehigh. We saw right away early trying to go into Larry Reppert, who stands in at six foot seven, trying to take advantage of the height. Yeah, Reppert, a nice target inside at six foot seven. As we said, there's going to be some mismatches underneath, and they're trying to take advantage of them and get him some little looks inside. Just underway from Southern Lehigh High School. And that one did not go on the first shot by Corey Smith. There's Brian Smith. Matt Carey as a freshman starting all of last season. That helps out. Coach Bron Holland. Shot off the window does not go by Gothard. And we remain scoreless. Here's Gruel, stops, and then you see the aggressiveness of Smith always knows where that basketball is. Well, Coach told us before the game that, you know, that's the, the missing ingredient. Smith doing a great job for him, hustling. You see Coach Allen doing, hustling, doing what they need to do, contributing as that X factor in the Bangor lineup. Off the inbound. Over to Gruel from way downtown. The rainbow three is good. Jimmy Gruel with his 31st three-pointer of the season. Uh, you know what you're going to see here when you come to Southern Lear, you're going to see some great shooting. If it's not Schmidt, you're going to see Gruel coming out and showing you what he's got from the outside. Smith and goes behind the backboard, and it'll be Southern Lehigh basketball. The NBA range kind of three to start things off. But there's no bashfulness here in this gym. You're going to see that. You can take a look at they pass that ball way outside. Look at that. Ooh. That's three steps away from the three-point line. Got to pay extra for that one. And that's the foul on Devagat. First team foul. Corey Soroga doing a great job in the winning as Notre Dame had four fouls going into the fourth quarter and scored all his 12 points during that period. Here's Soroka now with a pass across the border. And that one tipped out. I believe this will be suddenly ice basketball that is. Just underway from Suddenly Eye High School. 3-0 your score on a three-pointer by Jimmy Gruel. Al DeCarlo, Jim Wills. Hope you're enjoying our coverage here on Thursday night. They go Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday this week in the Colonial League. Kick it outside. Gruel for three more. That one well off the mark. Ott had it. Lost it. Schmidt is with the follow. Good job by the Spartans the line. going to the offensive glass there, Al. That one had a couple opportunities there. And Schmidt's going to step to the line. Schmidt, a very good foul shooter at 80%. And 101 of 127 so far this season. Going into tonight, he makes two. Southern Lehigh on top, a score of 5 zip. Tipped away. Hot hat.
at him momentarily, and it goes off his hands out of bounds and turn over to the Slaters. Give some Lehigh the ball. Give him a nice crowd out here, and every time we come down to Southern Lehigh, they have a great crowd, especially the student body. And yeah, they've done a nice job here. Big turnout here for the student body tonight. Nice cheering section there. It's great to see that school spirit in the involvement. Yeah, they're all decked out. I think you can go up there a little bit. <laughs> you fit right in. Here's Schmidt, 5.26 on the clock, opening quarter. Schmidt takes that shot. That was from well, midway between the three-point line and half court. I know when you're coming off a 37-point performance, you feel like you can hit from everywhere, but Jim, that was way out there. And the shot for three. That one doesn't go. Schmidt with the rebound as Popovis can't connect. Here's Gruel the other way as things start to open up here. Gruel switches hands. Smith takes it away. Smith to the high bounce, keeps his control, then kicks it outside. Popovis swings it around. Gets it back to Smith. Was thinking three, and I believe they're going to get Boyer here on the foul. Boy, Jim, so far in the early going, first three and a half minutes, we've seen bodies flying. Tough shot. Take a look. Yeah, you're going to see goes to make a move inside, and then the foot is sticking out there from Boyer. End up with the Slater having the ball underneath the basket. Bangers still looking for their first points of the game. Again, they started the other night with the first 20 of the game. And they'll call an offensive foul here against Brian Smith. Yeah, the Bangers coaching staff not real happy with that one. Smith was in foul trouble the other night against when in the inside presence against Wilson, and that was the thing that, that bothered him because going against Wilson with those big guys at Davidson's inside while well, Al is a lot tougher. So you can't afford to get Smith in foul trouble in any game. First quarter brought to you by Kleckner's two locations, Whitehall and Emmaus. Now Banger Slater basketball with 425 in the clock as we right around mid point of the first quarter. Tomorrow night, Jim and I will be at Liberty's Memorial Gymnasium as we do a custody take on Liberty. Hot. And here's a three bomb. That one does not go for Popovis, who a couple nights ago had five threes in the win. in a loss against Wilson. They were beating that game. We said the only game they lost in this stretch six of seven has been against Wilson. They were winning that game in the final minute and ten seconds. Ended up losing down the stretch. Good outlet pass. Southern Lehigh zone. Very, very active. Doing a good job cutting off the baseline as well. Repper at that time getting on the baseline. Oh, Repper with good positioning down low. Forcing a turnover. First three of the night, 22nd of the season, and eight nothing lead. Well, you can tell he's in that shooter zone now. There's no question. The one dribble and the release. That one rims out for Matt Carey. Rebound to Reppert. And Jim, while Reppert hasn't scored that much this, this season, he's doing a great job on the board so far in this game. Made his presence felt underneath, Al, and that's the key. You're going to see an offensive foul this time called against Schmidt. So you can see the last one in there, he just went right off that screen, nice and smooth with the J outside. This time down the floor, not as successful as he gets called for the offensive. Schmidt, an okay golfer in his own right. Just a little bit. He can play the game just a little bit. <laughs> Boy, he's been explosive on that golf course. He's been putting up some very low numbers. Inside, nice move, won't fall, however, for Gothard. Another rebound this time by Boyer. 2.39 the clock. And the Spartans pitching a shutout to this point. Rule goes baseline, one on three, kicks it outside. Baseline, Jay, nothing but cotton there for Eric Boyer, and 10-0 your score. 
Nice job by Rule. Oh, look at that baseline. Very good job. Now, see, this is what he did. He's going to penetrate. He's going to use that baseline. Now he's in trouble. Look at the outlet. You know the corner man's going to be open. Hits the corner there. And Boyer sinks the bucket. Take a look at the Colonial League in the East. Wilson 9-1, Notre Dame at 8-2 after the loss to Southern Lehigh. Banger at 6-4. We saw Ben Argel the other night lose one to Catasauqua. Catasauqua leading the West now a four-game lead over Northern Lehigh. With Western and Palmerton in the South, it's still tight there. Southern Lehigh at 7-3. Salisbury at 5-4. They play one less game because of the weather condition. Saucon Valley at 5-5. Five and, five. and Palisades at 0-9, 0-11. And and they have an 85-game losing streak dating back five years. And going into tomorrow, they'll be at Palmerton trying to stop that streak. Palmerton, of course, 1-11, 0-10 on the season. And for them, I think it's the, the, the state record is 88. And it goes back a long way. So Palisades is still looking to get that first win. Back underway here, 2.20 on the clock. And a 10-0 advantage for the Spartans. Nice job with the zone once yeah. again. Really moving very well in the zone. Down low, first basket comes there for Gothard as they get it inside. Gothard finally breaks the spell for the Slaters, gets that first deuce. What a nice move on the in inside in the lane. Soroka, baseline, kicks it back out to Boyer as they do a good job swinging around. Grew up top of three, doesn't get the roll. Schmidt, he's just charging the charge of the foul instead. It'll be Smith the other way, and double dribbles. Tried to change hands, but it went up too high. It remains 10-2. Substitution there for the Slaters. Their foreign spot comes in. Number three. He's going to take his turn on Schmidt in a one-on-one -on -one match. 120 on the clock. Schmidt. Can that look too easy? Well, the thing of it is, you know, during the year, you're used to giving that kind of room to most shooters in the Colonial League. You can't give Schmidt that kind of room. That's the difference. From the corner. No. 13 to 2, your score. And you take a look now. See, he's going to back off, back off. You've got to get out on him. You know, I know he could be on the dribble, but you've got to count on some help. You can't let him have that far of an advantage outside. Final minute, quarter number one. Here's Soroka. Now breaks the defense in transition going up. Can't score the basket, though. However, it is Reppert. A little bit too hard off the glass. And the Slayers come the other way. Ferencbach. They're trying to get it down to Gothard. When we talked to Coach Von Holland, he said Gothard has really done a great job. Scored 21 points against Penn Argel. Uh, he's just, you know, he's been playing really well. He's averaging almost 11 points a game, five rebounds. You can tell he's done a great job in there. What a passion for the game he has. You can see it right on him when he's out there. Very, very intense individual. Good look at a three from the inbound. That was Carey, no. Right now, the, the boards have totally been controlled by Southern Lehigh. Rule in transition. And doesn't get the roll, but will go to the line with 25 ticks on the clock first quarter. Rule's doing some nice job with the penetration here this evening, going inside, really making it hard for the Slaters, beating the Slaters up the court, getting opportunities. Take a look at it here. He goes with the crossover dribble. Now he's going to go up and use the body very, very nicely. He's going to step to the foul line. Rule is 69% free throw shooter. Misses the first. Coming in 22 of 32 on the year. Hit the first three to start the game off tonight. Gets their name. Grew had four threes and route to an 18 point performance. Second one is good. Seconds on the clock, first quarter. Three, 
Just not going that one was Andy Mulich. Mulich gets it right back, swings it around. They'll try it again from long range. That one doesn't fall for Carey. Outlet pass, Corey Schmidt. Soroka does not go. All Southern Lehigh after one quarter, they go on a 14 to two advantage and that's what they lead after one. We'll be back on two sports. He doesn't report to a management committee. He doesn't report to a marketing department. He reports to Mary Johnson's arthritis, to Sally Wickstrom's upset stomach, and to Greg Porter's poison oak. He's your family prescription center pharmacist. He lives and works right here in town, so that means he reports to you. Call Family Prescription Center today at 866-0709. Taking the time to care, Family Prescription Center. One quarter complete. All Spartans in this one, 14 to two is your score as we welcome you back to Southern Lehigh High School. We mentioned a nice crowd on hand, indeed it is. And you know, right now, everything's going well, Jim, for Southern Lehigh. Doing a great job, beating the Slaters down the court, shooting the ball very, very well. That guy right there has to be a happy coach right now. Excellent first quarter, 14 to two lead. How about for uh, Coach Bron Holland? Maybe not so happy. No, he's struggling now, and you know he's trying to look for a different combination here. He's substituted a few guys, trying to get a different look inside, try to get some more ball action, movement in, inside and out. One for ten, Jim, in the first quarter. They have to do a better job with that. Now one for eleven after the miss by Popovis. Rule looked away from that ball and knocked that one out of bounds. Well, you know, the thing you brought out, it's a great point, Al. Southern Lehigh doing an outstanding job on the boards. That's providing this opportunity for them to get up the floor so fast and have fast break opportunities like you just saw. Underway, second quarter. As right now, Southern Lehigh is giving them the outside. And now a traveling call here on Mulich. You can see he ends up moving both feet there. You see the step he took. And since Slater's jumped out to a 36-10 lead on Saucon Valley, and a pretty good Saucon Valley team in its own right. Here's Schmidt, 14 footer good. Well, see, that's the thing that we just talked about before. Yes, he can drive, and yes, he can pull up for that 14, 15 foot jumper. But a lot better D that time. People in his face, he just connected. Schmidt, yes. Soroka, and there's Boyer from the baseline. And Boyer is hitting, you know things are going well, as he got two good looks, and he gives you extra dimension. He's averaging only five points a game, already has four, Jim. That helps you out quite a bit. Yeah, he looks confident from that point, sticking those two shots basically from the same spot. Looks very, very confident. To the corner. Popovis gives it down to Gother, back outside. They keep firing away on the three, hoping at one point, They'll start getting in the flow. Smith goes to the corner. This one at two. That one doesn't drop. One for 15 now from the field. That makes it two for 15. And Gruel with the finger roller just lips out. Here comes Smith. The pull this off his hand to Boyer. That's the spot. Boyer likes it. That one doesn't go, however, but they'll get a second chance on the rebound by Kyle Beamlander, who checks into the game. See, that's the thing where they're really getting success. As you know that that's going to be successful with that jump shot, but the success is coming off the rebounding area. They are really out hustling on the boards. 21 to 4, your score on the third three pointer of the night for Corey Schmidt. Here's Smith, too hard off the glass, and then gets a rebound and pulls it away from Boyer. That's a good bucket. Good hustle there by Smith. Did a nice job ripping that rebound right out of the hands and putting it back up. In the paint. Schmidt can't get that one to go. 
Inside five to play. I think it's Boyer they'll get. And Boyer may think it visits their bench. That's his second foul. So Larry Rapper checks back into the game. You're watching us here on Thursday night. This is live action in the Colonial League. Aldo Carlo, Jim Wills. A late tip. Suddenly I jumped out to a 10-0 lead. 14-2. And right now, 21-6 advantage. As Corey Schmidt's already scored 13 points. Beam lander. Whistle on a foul. And Mark Popovis. Well, Schmidt is basically doing what he wants to do here. You see he's got the single dribble and pop. You know, he's going he's gonna to attempt you to come out on him, and then he's going to drive by you. And very confident in his shot. Just like now. All right, he tempted you there with the shot. Now he's going to drive. Now the, the dump off the Repper. Repper fights inside, and a good move, changing hands. That was an excellent move by Repper at that time. It looks like all the big man drills that Coach Schaefer's been doing are starting to pay off with Repper. 4.16 on the clock. That one at two, but... Gets things going there for the Slaters. That's Matt Carey. Second quarter brought to you by Kleckner's. Two locations, Whitehall and Emmaus. Schmidt missed the first time, goes up, doesn't get the roll, but will visit the line. Jim Wall's still early in this game. I say early, but we're in the second quarter. One thing. You look at Corey Schmidt. He's having a great game to this point. Foul trouble. He's been a little issue so far this year. He's fouled out of four games, and three of those games he's fouled out. Suddenly, he has not won. Right now, he has no fouls assessed to him, and uh, or has maybe one foul against him. And then he could play in his zone. You don't have to worry about it. get more aggressive inside, as you know what he does outside. Yeah, that's the key, and to keep him out of foul trouble is the number one issue for Coach. Schaefer and you know that's the thing like he plays so much more confident you know with him in the lineup obviously because that scoring ability just makes everybody else's game get elevated 25-8 inside out Smith and drive changes hands doesn't get the roll so that is taken there by Reppert this on a foul this one will be charged to Jared Farnsbach you see that drive by Smith. Good job putting that up off the glass. Just rims out a little bit. Then Reppert brings the ball down, which Coach Schmidt and Schaefer sure doesn't want. He wants him to keep it up over his head at six foot seven, but ends up getting the better end of this deal as he'll go to the foul line. Jim, not a good sign here for the Bangor Slaters, but still 3.36 on the clock, already in the bonus. All the Spartans. Reppert to the line. He's at 52% on the season. And he makes the first. Averaging 3.1 points per game. This will be his fourth if he can connect and does. So right now, six of six, or seven of seven, excuse me, seven of eight for the Suddenly Ice Spartans. Wow, the free not, throw a, line. not a good sign for Coach Holland here. They're going to be able to shoot in the bonus and be able to shoot like that. Three by Carey, off the mark. As the shooting woes continue here for the Slaters. Yeah, they can't buy a bucket out of any of the guards, and that's what's really killing them right now. Talked about the lowest score so far this year for a banger team. He's been 43 against East Strasburg North. Scored four times in the 70s. Ron Holland see enough. He'll call a timeout here with 3.08 on the clock and a 27-8 lead by the Southern Ice Spartans. Good look at Bob Schaefer and his staff. Take a look at tonight's RJ Carpet Connection trivia question. Who is Southern Lee's all-time boys scoring leader? Oh, you think about that momentarily. You get about five seconds or so. That's all you need. You either know or you don't. And the answer is Jim Coyle back in 94 set at 1,884 points. That was the year, you know, you look at them and uh, Dan Welker. And, oh, what a team know, they had. Also a 1,000 point score in his own right. Had about 1,400 plus. You see the banner up there in Welker and Coyle 
back to back. Wow, that, that is just a tremendous 1994 season for those guys down here. Uh, 206, Shoebox playing at the sales with 1386. Corey Schmidt already has surpassed the 1,000 point mark earlier this year. He's at 1295 coming into tonight, so his name will be up on that banner at the end of the season. When it's all said and done, 27 to 8 year score. They get a good look from the outside here. Farnsbach doesn't go. Jim, right now, you're just having problems from outside. Try to get to Farnsbach again, and they'll call a jump ball. Possession arrow, Southern Lehigh. Well, credit to zone. Southern Lehigh zone is just doing such a great job matching up everywhere on the zone. And really movement. You know, when coaches don't want to play zone sometimes because, you know, the kids don't move in it. But you can't say that right now about the Southern Lehigh zone. They're making the guards take those long shots. The guards are not being able to convert. They're hence 27-8 to score. Schmidt doesn't get a shot to go. But, Jim, what it seems right now with Corey Schmidt, you say when you get that flow and when you know you have that shot, He's going up, he's taking a shot, knowing that if he doesn't get it, you know, maybe 80% of the time he's going to go to the free throw line. Right. And he creates opportunities for himself. You know, he's, he is a pure shooter, but he's also creating opportunities by going inside and, you know, using his body to get fouls called. And, you know, when you're in that zone now, that, that basket looks as big as the ocean, and he's been in that zone the past couple days, obviously. 20-point lead at 28-8. to eight. Four straight... Free throws for Schmidt. Two fifty on the clock. Quick passing down to Smith. And he draws some contact and will get himself to the line. You take a look, he bangs into Reppert there. Reppert does a good job of just staying straight up. A little frustrated on the call, but Smith, to his credit, draws contact. Well, that's the second foul for Reppert. And he'll come out. They want to get him with a third foul going into the locker room. Kevin Carney checking in the junior at six foot three. Smith makes a free throw. One of two. 29 to nine. Two minutes exactly on the clock. That prize here, penetration. That time proposed, matched up. Trying all different matchups to see if they can stop this gentleman right here. Not very successful so far. Well, the last three times down the floor, Corey Schmidt's been to the free throw line. Now has 18 points after that free throw. <laughs> 31 to 9. I don't know if Slaters and you have any chance of really coming back in this game. These last minute 45 seconds, you got to get something going. They do there. Good movement of the basketball to Dylan Goffin. One of the best times they've come down the floor and moved the ball around, getting the cutter on the inside. Schmidt. Schmidt now guarding him. You say that a few times, y'all. Smith on Schmidt. <laughs> and, and Jim, getting, uh, getting, getting uh, in the uh, bonus that early, we say with 345, this is what's been happening. Look at look at Schmidt. Crushes Last four you. times down the floor. Absolutely crushes you, and they know you're in it, and they're going to keep driving and driving and pull that contact. Talk to Coach Schaefer. Kurt Zellner prior to the game. Trying to figure out the performance he had the other night. One of the best performances since he's been the head coach. It's been 21 years, and he remembers a 34-point performance by Schubach. 
they were talking the possibility that Coyle had 37 on the same night that Welker had 29. Nice shot by the Slaters underneath. Gother with two more. You see Gother get it three inside. That, that's last two times down the floor. Slaters finally trying to figure out the zone a little bit, doing a better job of getting the ball inside to Gother. Inside a minute, 20 point advantage. Now down to 47 seconds. And while Corey Schmidt has been the last four times down the floor at the free throw line. He'll take a three here. That one no good. Rebound tipped out. And this one on Southern Lehigh. Jared Randolph into the game for the Slaters. Final 30 seconds of the first half. Popovic still looking for his first points of the night. And this was really where you would really like to get him here. To get some momentum going into the locker room here. Well, we talked about the last two times down. He did a nice job finding the opening in the scene. This time, going to end up with... Jared Randolph on the foul line. Question here from the bench. Scorekeeper has a question. Uh, well, they're checking that. 16.8 seconds on the clock. 33-13 as Randolph goes to the free throw line. Has been there just four times this year. Has made one. It's averaging just over two points per game. Makes the first. Second one is no good. Tipped up. Taken by Scott Hoffman. Over to Schmidt. Schmidt now outlets that pass. And Soroka somehow flips it over. And they'll get to the free throw line and Kevin Carney. For Soroka, the quarterback. Assess the defense and Quick pass over. Hey, there's a prime example of being on the same page. They got that ball down the floor, look for each other tremendously in all different aspects, and end up getting a couple of foul shots out of it with 5.9 seconds. Carney just two of seven so far this year. That's a free throw. Five point nine seconds left. First half. One of two. Now three seconds on the clock. This will count if it goes, does not. All Southern Lehigh in the first half. They go into the locker room leading 34 to 14 over the Banger Slayers. We'll be back on two sports. company makes the original overhead door the people who install and service them take them pretty seriously call or log on for the overhead door dealer nearest you since 1937 Walters Pharmacy has been making life easier for you the name you trust most when you need your prescription filled that's because getting your prescription right is our number one priority and only Walters Pharmacy delivers anywhere in Allentown for free our wide selection of health products and mobile equipment as well as our convenient hours make Walters Pharmacy the fast and convenient choice I went to Walters Pharmacy and they were able to supply all of my child's needed medications I call Walters Pharmacy for all my prescriptions and healthcare items and have them delivered to my door Walters Pharmacy in Allentown your under-insulated home can cost you hundreds. Now is the time to re-insulate with Lehigh Valley Insulation. In less than a day, our experienced crew of installers will thoroughly re-insulate your home. 
Our new insulation is cleaner and more energy efficient than ever. Plus, it's very affordable. Enjoy seasonable comfort under a blanket of premium insulation and cut your heating and cooling costs. Make sure your home measures up. Call Lehigh Valley Insulation for a free consultation. It's comfort that pays. If one picture is worth a thousand words, just imagine what a thousand pictures can tell us. At RMRI of Bethlehem, we're at the forefront of diagnostic imaging. Every day, new technology helps us deliver faster, more accurate results. Best of all, our board-certified staff works in unison, so all your testing and diagnostic imaging is completed in one place. When every minute counts, we're everything you need. Radiology and MRI of Bethlehem. Guarantee your seats for the 2009 season and see the future stars of the world champion Philadelphia Phillies. Season ticket plans are on sale now, starting at just $81. And what could be more fun than attending an Iron Pigs game as a group? Bring 20 people or more and receive special group benefits. Check out the new ticket center at ironpigsbaseball.com for more information. The Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Laugh, cheer, boink. 34-14, your score at the break. A 20-point advantage for the suddenly Ice Spartans in this one. And to the point, Jimmy, you look at it and you come into the game. Bangers coming off a game where they scored 20 to nothing the lead, and they end up leading at the half in their win, 36-10. But now all of a sudden, the opposite way, what's Coach uh, uh, Bron Holland telling his troops right now? Well, the tables have been turned, obviously, on Banger. Now, the problem is they can't shoot the basketball right now. That zone has really given them too many problems. The guards can't hit any shots from the outside to create opportunities to get the big men the ball inside. They Finally figured it out a couple times in the last couple of drives down the basketball floor in the third, or excuse me, the second quarter. But other than that, they have been stone cold from the outside, and that's what's really killing Popovus without any points is really, really killing them. On the other side, 10 for 10 is Corey Schmidt from the free throw line. He's got three threes. He's got 21 points already. Where is he heading, and how do they play defense on him? Well, he's heading to about 44 points at the rate he's going right now, or 50 points possibly. But the thing of it is, they've tried a lot of different things with him. We'll see what Coach Holland wants to do in the second half. Maybe they'll try something else with him, but he has really had his own way in that first half. Anything he's tried has been successful, and them getting into the bonus so early, look at them 10 for 10 from the foul line. Well, you play two halves of basketball. The first half going to Southern Lehigh without question. They're up by 20. 34-14, your score at the break. We'll be back on two sports. Let's go get your gold. You know it's always been the best. Let's go get your gold. Yakko's an Allentown tradition. He doesn't report to a management committee. He doesn't report to a marketing department. He reports to Mary Johnson's arthritis, to Sally Wickstrom's upset stomach, and to Greg Porter's poison oak. He's your family prescription center pharmacist. He lives and works right here in town, so that means he reports to you. Call Family Prescription Center today at 866-0709. Taking the time to care, Family Prescription Center. Since the overhead door company makes the original overhead door, the people who install and service them take them pretty seriously. Call or log on for the overhead door dealer nearest you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles!
You can count on us. We're an important part of your life. We're the Press. The Press Newspaper Group, publisher of eight community newspapers, is the one place where you'll find your weekly link to all the local news in your community. No matter where you live, East Penn, Parkland, Whitehall, Copley, Northwestern, Northampton, Salisbury, Catasauqua, or Bethlehem, the Press delivers. The Press Newspaper delivers in-depth local news and sports to more than 65,000 readers throughout the Lehigh Valley. Count on us to be part of your life. You and the Press, a winning combination. Call 610-740-0944. At the half, in the Center Valley, 34-14, your score suddenly on Lehigh top of the Banger Slate as we take a look at what happened in quarters one and two as we bring in the highlights in this one, the D.E. Crestman Insurance first half highlights, and we begin with a three by Jimmy Gruel. Uh, Gruel from way outside there, Al. You knew they were going to be hot when he hit that shot early in the game, but here's the guy who's extremely hot. When you look at Corey Schmidt, it doesn't matter. Outside, inside, give me a step, I'll take the jumper. Look what he's done. Tremendous first half, 21 points. Is that what you call it, a jumper from way downtown? <laughs> Slater's not as much success, but they finally get something going with Brian Smith off the window doing a good job. And then they pass it down to Dylan Gothard. Gothard has been asking for the basketball and then scored, ended up scoring six points. Overhead door, uh, halftime stats, and not looking pretty right now. Six of 22, 27%. Jim, the one that jumps out at you right away is the 0 for 12 from long range. Well, and you look at there are only two field goals ahead of them here with that shooting, so it's not like they're shooting the lights out that far inside, but the outside, four for eight, that really, and the 14 for 16 from the line does tremendous amounts of damage. Now you look at the rebounding edge, right now it's 15 to 10. I think at one point it may have been 15 to 3. I mean, it was pretty indicative of how suddenly I played. It was once and done on the way down to the floor by the Banger Slaters. Interesting, Al, when you look at bench points, one point each, this is a starter's game right now, and this is basically a shooter's game for Southern Lehigh. Take a look at the individual scoring. Corey Schmidt leading all scorers with 21. Brule, Boyer, and Reppert with four. Carney off the bench with that one. Gother with six, Smith with five, Carney with two, and Randolph with one. And the name you don't see right there, and there's the one that Jim mentioned, Aaron Popovis, who's averaging almost 12 points per game on 27 threes, has uh, been scoreless. And I think, you know, you practice now, and you, you know, sometimes you joke about it, but you know, come out and you start, you know, start hitting. These guys are hitting and trying to warm up from long range because that's what they have to do to get back in this game. Oh, they definitely do because that's the three ball is going to be needed definitely for them to get out of this 34 to 14 hole that they're in right now. Down by 20, the biggest lead of the game was 22 on a number of occasions. It was 31 to 9. Glad you could join us here on this Thursday night of high school hoops action in the Colonial League. Again, a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday schedule. And some of these teams also played on Monday. So, you know, four games in one week. And, Jim, I think we're getting into that, that stage where you're playing, you know, three games in one week and sometimes even four because of what's going on with the weather conditions. And sometimes you're not at full speed. But in the Colonial League, as well as the Leah Valley Conference, and you and I will see that tomorrow night with Deerfield Liberty, you have to be playing at all cylinders because anybody can get you on any given night. Yeah, a couple of makeup games thrown in here and there, and all of a sudden you're really in a grinding stretch, and that's the thing that's going to determine. We talked about it. This week is really going to put a determining factor into the Colonial League race. Down low is Reppert, and Reppert had the quick pass from Schmidt, went down with the basketball, and Jimmy mentioned it a couple times, as big as he is, just wanted to go up with that one and get the deuce. Yeah, he's down there hesitating a little bit, but finally went up there, and now... They're going to get the ball underneath the basket with an opportunity here to see if they can score. Just underway, third quarter. And Soroka to inbound. Cruel wide open on the baseline for three and knocks it home. How he started the game, Gruel starts the second half, his 32nd three-pointer of the season. Jim, you can't give him that. No, an opportunity like that, he had... Just love sitting out there with that in that corner position. And if they're going to start putting a little bit different pressure on Schmidt, he's going to be open and he's going to start scoring. Tough go over here for the Banger Slaters. As the Spartans, you mentioned what they're capable of doing. 7-3 so far in the air. Boyer misses. Oh, he is tip from behind that ball and remains suddenly high basketball. Nice block from behind by Smith. That's the key. And the, didn't use his body at all. Just went up and over and hit that ball out. Here's Schmidt. 
Goes right back down to Soroka. That one blocked by Smith. Rule gets it back. One on three, kicks it back out. And here's Schmidt, he drives. That one gets stripped away and a whistle and a foul. Actually, I'll send Schmidt to the free throw line and call that a shot. I didn't know if he had, I'm getting that ball up. Well, somewhere where he's been very, very successful here in the first half. Take care, you see that block by Smith, the second block on the inside. 10 for 10 for the stripe. Now make it 11-11. Well, for 12. 39 14, a 25 point lead. Well, one of the things that the Slaters wanted to do is to put out a physical presence, and this shooting ability has been able to negate that physical presence and make it more of a finesse game for Southern Lehigh. Soroka comes out of nowhere, makes that one, gets it to Gruel. Gruel now will stop, bring it back, assess the defense, pass it down to Boyer. Boyer high off the glass and one. Great movement of the basketball from Jimmy Gruel. Down low to Boyer. That was a sweet, sweet move by Gruel. You're going to see it here now with the no-look pass inside to Boyer. Boyer goes up and connects on the basket. That play looks great when the connection is made with the basket. The connection's not made to basket. It's not that good a play. And it's up to a 41-14 advantage. Smith gets it to the corner. Popovic down low. Gothard. Boy, the defense right now by suddenly I have been very good. It's Popovic. When he gets it, he's got a hand in his face, Jim. And now he'll throw it away. Well, the frustration starting to get there. And Popovic just a little bit there. You know, he's not getting that open look. And then you see Coach Holland speaking of frustration right now. He, he doesn't know, you know, this is a tough position to be in when you're a coach. You don't know what move to make here because. You know, you try different things, but, you know, you don't know what could jumpstart your group. Cruel from the corner. At least Schmidt wide open from downtown. Yes! Wow. Fourth three-pointer of the night for Corey Schmidt. Is he dialed in or what? That is, you know, he is, he's having a week, a week of weeks here right now. Notre Dame got the wrath the other night. Now Banger's getting the wrath here this evening. Count that one for three. That's a big three-pointer. One comes by Matt Carey. Well, you said Carey was 0 for in the first half, correct, Al? So now you're in a situation where he finally sticks one. There you're going to see once again the long ball from Schmidt. Make it look easy. So try to convert a four-point play and does. So I'll get you back a little bit. 44-18, but a long way to go. And things got to change, and things are not changing for number 21. You know, coming into the season, you looked at the teams that, you know, right on paper, that expected to do some Southern Lehigh, Saucon Valley, and there was a bunch of them. Notre Dame, Wilson, you know, and then... You know, the quick start by Penn Argyle. They jumped out of five, you know, a 5-1 five and one record. Schmidt, that one off the front of the rim. And then they've lost seven straight. Banger has come to life. Here's Popovic. That one hits the side of the rim. Soroka, three on two. Has Gruel. Gives it up to Gruel. And he'll bring it back out with 4.52 on the clock. Schmidt with a steal. And Smith can't get the roll, however. Soroka the other way. Through the defense, waiting his turn, and he just fires on through. Corey Soroka doing a good job. Smith on one end did a great job as well. well he did a great job getting the steal. Can't convert on the bucket. That's the kind of night you're having when you're down 46 to 18. Those things just don't get the roll for you. We're enjoying our live coverage here on Service Electric 2 Sports. At this point, we got a blowout going really for Southern Lehigh as they've cruised. They jumped out to a 14-2 lead after one, a 34-14 lead at the break. And now are up 46-19 after the free throw by Devik Ott. 
And for Ott, that's his first points of the night. He gets both. Third quarter brought to you by Kleckner's. Two locations, Whitehall and Emmaus. Schmidt inside. And doesn't get the roll. That one tipped back out to Gruel. Good job by Reppert. Second chance opportunities in the favor of Southern Lehigh. And they'll get the basketball back as that one goes off to Smith. That's interesting how opportunities come about. You know, the fast break opportunities coming about here. Now they're going to have another opportunity here with the out-of-bounds play to see if they can get it into the hands of Schmidt again, maybe. That one's from behind the arc, and Cotton. Jim, he's in a flow. He is in a zone. Five three-pointers. He's approaching 30. Well, the scary part of that play was out. They just backed him out into the corner on that out-of-bounds play. Nobody else even really moved. He just backed out into the corner. Gruel sees him out there and just gives it to him. Boyer rips down a rebound. Corey Soroka wide open. They'll give it to Gruel. Gruel goes up and scores two. And he's got five in the quarter. A little collision on the lead there between Smith and Reppert. Now you're going to see he can dish the ball off as well. You're going to see Gruel with the bucket. And now we're going to see the foul coming down here. Little reach in by Schmidt. And Smith is going to go to the line. And a line change coming in. 51-20. As Brad Holland brings in a couple of different players to see if they can spark his team and get some points. It's a free throw. The outlet pass, and Soroka was wide open. Lost the handle momentarily. And Jim, that's too easy. You're looking down the court. And Soroka back-to-back -back baskets. And Soroka now getting his part in the scoring operation. Two easy buckets for him. Well, you can see that Southern Lehigh has decided that they are going to uh, play that baseline, hug that baseline, and try to have Smith get a few charge calls on him tonight. And they've been successful a couple of times. And third foul, I believe, on Smith as he goes to the bench. And down to Corey Schmidt, who has 29 points. We're in the third quarter. We were talking to Coach Schaefer, and he said Jimmy Gruel has done a great job. Gruel's averaging 14 points per game, and he's really got to be on his mark. And a Boyer here on the foul away from the ball. And Jim, this is where you just want to play focus, really. You're both the teams. You don't want anything else to happen. Nice passing down low. That one too hard off the glass by Chris Pinto. With 40 into the lineup, Scott Hoffman, the junior 6'1 forward. Soroka. He's got six all in this quarter. 55 20. Hoffman with another rebound. Foul against on Soroka. What's on tap for Southern Lehigh in the next couple of games? They'll be at Palmerton to host Northwestern, and then the host Wilson. Quick passing down to Gruel. Boyer. No. Reppert gets the board. Check that that was Hoffman with the rebound. A couple of different opportunities. Uh, turnover by suddenly I Jim. People watching at home, you know, you know it's, it's a Thursday night. Some of the Colonial League coaches will be going home and say, wow, what, you know, look at the score, you know, what happened there. And you're seeing a team that you haven't seen. But, you know, it's been like that so, sometimes in the Colonial League where you, you see a team 
you know, put 80 points on and win, and then they're losing. But it's it's the matchups, and sometimes the matchups go one way or the other. But you look at the Bengals Slayers, and you're watching. Now they only have 20 points in the third quarter. Tell you what, they are a dangerous team, just not tonight. That's exactly right. They were too cold in that first half. It just killed them. As you said, the 0 for shooting in the first half from the three-point line just absolutely buries them for a team that relies on somewhat, not all the time, but somewhat of the three-point line. And then, you, you know, you don't get any points from that, and you're in trouble, when, especially when you got a guy on the other side that can really light it up from that part. Well, they have 63s on a year, so they do, you know, like to hit it from downtown. 154 in the clock is when all Southern Lee I 55 to 20. And the next foul, Jim, we're in the, and, and I think you've noticed it too, we're in the third quarter with a minute 54. The next foul will be a one-on-one. It could be a free throw clinic here for the fourth quarter, Al. And Schmidt will go to the free throw line where he has not missed tonight. I believe he's 12 for 12 from the stripe. That's pretty good numbers here as you're in the third quarter. 29 points, 12 for 12 free throws. Not sure what the issue is in the scorer's table. Trying to get Jim Wills maybe some air time and see if he can hit a three. Good down there checking some numbers, it looks like, y'all. Yeah. Oh, they for a one out. and one. Thought yeah. it was a six foul. They, they have, have a seven, they have foul, a seven up foul up there now on the board, yeah. So that's what they're checking both scoreboards. The home scoreboard being the official one. Scorebook, I should say, not the scoreboard. Fifty-five twenty year score while they're taking a look at that and seeing what is right and what is wrong. We just take a look at the stage one more time. And this is coming into tonight. Again, things can change tonight depending on the outcomes of the games, of course. And we saw Penn Arjo the other night, and they got hammered, in, you know, by Katasakwa. They have lost seven in a row, Jim, but they're still a dangerous, you know, basketball team as well. We can take a look at the, those top two spots in that East Division. You know, you see Katasakwa rolling along, but they're going to have some tough games coming up soon. Southern Division, Southern Lehigh playing very, very well tonight. But look at the rest of those people behind them. Anybody could be dangerous in that pack. And then, you know, we'll see what happens with those top two teams in the East Division. And, who gets the wild card? That's going to be the big question. It's going to be like the NFL, Al. The team that gets the wild card might not have the best record. But boy, when they get in there, they're going to be very dangerous. They might win that Super Bowl, huh? Is that what you're trying to say? That's what I'm saying. 57 to 20, 31 points, 14 to 14 from the free throw line. Boyer, outlet pass, Soroka. That's been there all night. Soroka. Bucket is good. Soroka has controlled the third quarter. He's really getting down court quickly, releasing off of that rebound and the fast break. Three easy buckets for Soroka. Yeah, he's got four in this quarter all together, but three straight, as you mentioned. Jim, if you're Bron Holland, you take the, you know, the bus ride back, and again, there's still a minute 23. Seems stranger things happen, but I don't know how strange it looks like this one's well in the books, but it remains this way. You know, what are you telling your guys? Well, I, I think they got to chalk this one off and get rid of it quickly because there's a lot more basketball to be played. And, you know, when you look at how, how many things they've done right in the past couple weeks, far outnumber the cold spell they had here tonight. Soroka will get to the free throw line. We mentioned the schedule for Southern Lehigh for the Banger Slaters. It won't get any easier. We're talking about it. We, saw, we showed you the schedule. They got Katasaka on Saturday. And then they'll get at Palisades and host Northern Lehigh next Friday. So, you know, a big game against Katasaka. When you look at, I'm just looking at the Banger schedule. Boy, that, what, what, how about this stretch down at the, end of the, at the end of the schedule? Notre Dame, Nazareth, Wilson, and then finish with Penarja, which is a rivalry game. Oof. You don't realize all 10 points in the score are scored by Corey Sirocco. You don't realize that we're saying, oh, we're in the middle of January and, and we end by February. But, boy, there's a lot of games left to be played. And there's a lot of, a lot of good maneuverable points to be had, a lot of maneuvering in the standings for both teams. So that was number 52 out front, Jared Randolph. 
Randolph's third three-pointer of the season. Here's Schmidt, changes hands, can't score, and then over the top here, they'll call on Scott Hoffman. And you take a look inside, switches hands, nice job with the body control, just can't get it to go. Fox still running, no one sees that except me. Just want to let you know that, Jim. Because the mercy rule, mercy rule has gone into effect. 40 points. And it was a 41-point lead. Jim, we don't usually see that. The mercy rule goes into effect. Scott Hoffman scores the final two. 63 to 23 after three. We'll be back on two sports. Hey, basketball fans, if you love dealing with a winning team, head to the leader, Collectors in Whitehall and Amaz for the fabulous GE tip-off sale. Browse our huge selection of GE ranges, GE refrigerators, GE dishwashers, GE washers, and GE dryers. Now at Collectors, get great savings plus free delivery, free haul-away of old, a full parts department, and their own factory train techs. Stop in today. See why Collectors has been serving the Lehigh Valley since 1945. Two locations, Collectors, 2177 MacArthur Road in Whitehall and 575 Chestnut Street, Amaz. We are back here at Southern Lehigh, and things have really gone well for Southern Lehigh, not well for the Banger Slaters. Take a look, 14, 20, and 29, 63, 2, 12, and 9 for 23, a low-scoring affair for the Banger Slaters. Mercy rule in effect, and with that, they only stop at a timeout, an injury, and a free-throw shot, so this quarter will go extremely quicker. You know, you're talking about eight minutes? They'll go fast, but Corey Soroka will give this one up to Gruel. Lost the handle. Yeah, an interesting scenario, Al, with the, with the mercy rule. Seen it a lot of times in football. Haven't seen it that many times in basketball. It's 40 points at any time in the second half. And they hit the shot, and they made it 41. And once it goes into effect, it does. And they see the clock rolling right now. Eric Boyer checking to the bench. That one blocked by Hoffman and blocked the other way with a whistle and a foul by Beamlander. Beamlander, 6'1", junior. You can see him go up for the, the block inside. There it is right there, and he gets called for the foul. Now, we about an extra eight seconds off the clock. I don't know if they're going to add that. Again, at free throws, the clock does stop. So they may reset this to 6.53. Dylan Gothard, again, banger slayers, the players, the fans. Boy, they got an exciting team. I and mean, they had an exciting football season as well. And I think, you know, we talked to Coach Brian Holland. He said, you know, a different kind of year going into the season. Yeah, the school's all excited. The football team is very, very well trickles over into the basketball program you know and they got to just I said cut their losses here tonight they've done a, ha a great job outstanding job all year especially after the rough start they had you know they did a great job you said six out of seven and that's you know that's not the, what they're accustomed to up there so fourth you know. quarter brought to you by Kleckner's two locations Whitehall and Emance Schmidt leading the way with 31 and he has done an outstanding job tonight Foul stops the clock with 6.38. You see Service Electric who's who in business for the Lehigh Valley for 09. Congratulations, everybody. www.secTV.com. Another successful year for Service Electric Sports and Productions. 63-24 as Cool checks at a free throw line. Looking for double digits there and we'll get it there. Now has 10. Cruel's done a nice job of 
being a floor general here this evening. As we said, you know, getting close to his average right now. Hit those two big shots to begin both the first and the third period. I'll grow. We'll check out of the game. We'll probably be the end of the night for him. As Coach Schaefer will clear the bench one by one. 6.25 on the clock. A nice jumper. Devin got. Suddenly, I from the get go in this one jumped out to a 10 nothing advantage, 14 2 after one. And you really didn't get the gauge right there. Here's Schmidt for three. Wow. Wow. Six three pointers for Corey Schmidt. 34 points for Corey Schmidt. Line it up, let him go. Just goes downtown with the shot. Poe is drawing foul in, in his motion there for the shot. See some more bench clearing going to take place from Coach Schaefer. A lot of people going to the scorer's table now. Povis, tough night for him as he's definitely going to rebound against kind of sock as the end of the night for Corey Schmidt goes for 34 points six three pointers and was perfect from the free throw line so in the last two games he scored himself what is that 71 points Not too shabby Been a nice week for Corey Schmidt tune in Tuesday we have a preview of uh, our Yako's kind of guy yeah, I think it'd be a little tough to beat him out for that this week. So all fresh faces into the lineup for the Southern Lee Spartans. And you get some big minutes here, Jim, for some players that get some minutes, some players that don't get as many. Well, don't forget, Al, these guys play against this other group every day in practice, so this is a good thing that they can get some PT out here themselves. Little disconnect on the pass there from the outside. Jeff Smiley with the pass from the outside. Sixty-eight twenty-six Southern Lehigh. Mulich. As the Slaters will try to get something going. Baseline jumper. That one off the mark by Seth Ruggiero. He's going to jump ball. Possession arrow. Southern Lehigh. Schmidt scored 42 50. He was in that route. The game being how it is, though, I mean, you lose whole. Now, you know, put it in perspective, Jim, you're scoring 34 points in about three quarters. Yeah, that's the thing. And with that, uh, with the clock being in operation the way it is with the Mercy rule, you're losing a little bit of time, too, as well. So he could have had a couple more opportunities mm -hmm. there. The clock should actually still be rolling. Well, there was an injury timeout that time. Now that's yeah. why they stopped. It. You got hurt, Jim. <laughs> Is that a toenail for yeah, you? Yeah, I got Jim? hit with that elbow from Al DiCarlo, <laughs> trying to box me out. Smiley gives that one up, taken there by Brandon Longacre. Back out to Smiley. Over to Scott Hoffman. 3:40 on the clock. A three from long range by Longacre doesn't go. Rebound loose. And here come the Slaters the other way. Here's Mulich. Mulich outlet pass. The three is up and down. Second three of the game for Jared Randolph. Randolph doing a nice job in the limited minutes in the first half and then comes in here and playing a lot here in the second half. 
Hits himself a nice outside jumper. Smiley kicks it. Baseline shot was not dropped to Jack Quigley. And picked up again by Mulich. Mulich through the defense. And the bounce pass and the bucket. Scored by Asher Chavon. 68-31. Over to Nick Fell. Smiley. 240 on the clock. Kidding the crowd for suddenly. I always say the great crowd, the student body. They're expecting, you know, a different story. So they, they were taken out of the game as well. <laughs> That's true. It's, it's very rare that that happens. But, uh, you know, they're happy with the win, but they didn't really get to cheer a lot there because the outcome was decided very, very early. They're a little frustrated themselves. Long acre with the Dukes stopping and popping the J no good for Mulich. Mulich, nice balance pass down low. And a foul. Send Chris Pinto to the free throw line. 70 points for Southern Lehigh. Scored 80 the other night against Notre Dame. Oh, your wish, and there it is. Got number four coming in there, Luke Schaefer. Also, Dan Gordon, number 42. Pinto misses on the free throws. Smiley will bring it up. So Lehigh will be at Palmerton on Saturday. Banger will host Katasakwa. A big matchup up in the slate belt. Went over to Fell. Fell changing hands. No rebound to Chris Pinto. Mulich gets it back and scores. Mulich's first two points of the game. Clock stops with 104 remaining. I don't think anybody watching, and neither of us anyway, and neither of the coaches, believe that it was going to end this way. No. Certainly didn't think that coming in. Banger coming in physical, playing very well, six out of seven, as you said, but uh, shooting as cold as it is outside. Oh, that was the problem. Yep. Nick fell to the free throw line and makes one of two. Down to a minute. Stop the clock with another whistle. And Jim and I will be at Liberty's Memorial Gymnasium, Lehigh Valley Conference action tomorrow night. And a chance to see Liberty and Dira. Ball thrown away. Well, this night, once again, now Corey Schmidt, 14 for 14 from the free throw line, six threes and 34 points. Got hot early, continued to be hot during the remainder of the ball game as you said although him going to the foul line early was really a big plus for the Spartans. You see number two Seth Ruggiero step into the line he's only a junior. Jim we'll be back. Two points a game. Jim, we'll be back here next Friday night that's a big game. And I take a look at Corey Schmidt Wilson and Southern Lehigh right here. I think that uh, 
the fan base uh, and the student body, they'll be ready to go for that one. Well, they, they, can, they can rest assured that whatever they didn't get out tonight, they can get out next week because that will be a doozy. Jim, liking the word doozy. <laughs> <laughs> the words of Al DiCarlo, it'll be a doozy. And count that one for Asher. Final 30 seconds. Number 40 inside, Asher Chavon with a nice little left-handed move. And then the steal, final seconds. Here's Mulich, gives it up. And two more for Randolph. Randolph now has nine. And time will wind down in this one. 71-42, your final score. We'll come back, wrap this one up right after this on Two Sports. My name's Tom Stout. I'm the head basketball coach at Dura High School. And today we're going to talk about the pick and roll. We utilize the pick and roll here at Dura. It's a, a main uh, factor in our offense. It breaks the game down to two, two people. And we can do a bunch of different things off it. And we're going to show you four things that we do off our pick and roll. Hey, the first thing we're going to do is Anthony's going to come out and set a pick for Travis, shoulder to shoulder. Anthony rolls, Travis gets to the layup. Good job, nice way to get to the basket. The second thing, Anthony's gonna go out, set a screen, Chris is gonna get to the middle, one, two dribble, jumper, very nice, all right. Third thing, third thing is we gotta get out there, set the good screen, roll to the basket, and hopefully we get a good finish, very nice. And the fourth thing we do off the pick and roll, there's a good screen by Edwards, he flares to the corner instead of going. Boom, nice, very nice, great job. As you can see, we just ran a simple pick and roll and we had four different opportunities to do something different. We took advantage of it. Whatever the defense gives us, we take. And again, a simple thing, pick and roll, big part of basketball, big part of deer of basketball. Thank you. Welcome you back. Final score in this one, Southern Lehigh all in control. They win this one 71 to 42, and they started off 10 to nothing. They st you know, started off with a big first quarter, and then they really started to change things in the you know quarter number two. It looked pretty impressive you know, when it was done. Let's take a look at our Yakos player of the game, and there's no question this time. Sometimes there's a question. No question here. It's number 21, Corey Schmidt, 610-434-7833. Tomorrow after 9 o'clock, with zero good and operating named Corey Schmidt. Our Yakos player game, 34 points, 14 for 14 from the free throw line, five rebounds, six three pointers for him as well. Lehigh Valley insulation top scorer, well, Corey Soroka, because he hit 34, and look where he was hitting from. Yeah, he's just, he was on fire tonight and just didn't, you know, he gave you the jab step, then he came back and hit the jumper. If he didn't hit the jumper, he drove to the lane and he did exactly what he wanted to do all night long on the banger defense and give him credit. He had a tremendous game here tonight, set the tempo early, and then when they got in foul trouble, the Slaters did, he stepped to the foul line and was perfect from the foul line. Let's take a look at our second half highlights. Uh, uh, we're in control for suddenly I have power realty second half highlights and a lot was from number five however Corey Soroka who scored all his points in that in, in those quarters and ends up finishing with 10. Well what happens when you when you're that far ahead you get a lot of the pressure off you Soroka got a lot of quick releases off of uh, uh, defensive rebounds coming down the end and then he got himself a lot of scoring opportunities but you see that the guy who had the most opportunities and made the most of his opportunities all night was Corey Schmidt. Final scoring's Gruel with 11, 10 for Soroka, 34 again for Schmidt, over 70 in two games for him. Longacre with two, one for Carney, Boyer with six, two for Hoffman, Reppert finished with four, four for Mulich, five for Carey, seven for Gothard, 
Five points for Brian Smith, six points for Siobhan, four points for Devick Ott, and Jarrett Randolph finished with nine. That'll do it for tonight. Suddenly I win this one. Final score once again, 71 to 42. They'll be at Palmerton. They are now 11 and four on the season. Banger, nine and five. They'll host Catasacro for Tim Humbright, our stat man. Dave Donny, our director, Jim Wills, and everyone here at Service Ledger 2 Sports. I'm Aldi Carlos. So long until tomorrow night. The preceding was a presentation of Two Sports, the leader in local sports coverage.